Wow, thank you. <clears throat> okay, guys, we're going to keep moving along. This next individual that we have coming up, I actually, you know what? I invite everybody to stay standing. There's a reason why I invite you to stay standing. Everybody, I need you to stand up. If you can, please stand. This next individual, no pressure, Ash. <clears throat> this next individual that I have coming up, I have been to one, two, Three events with over 2,000 plus people there, give or take, all right? Every single time he has spoken, one, he has not got the praise that he deserves. Two, he has not got the ovation that he deserves. And I'm going to be damned if he came all the way from the Burlington area, right? Am I correct? The Burlington area and not be appreciated and respected for the words that are going to come out of this guy's mouth. So when he comes out here, I want you to not only give him a round of applause, but I want you to stay standing. Because after he is done, I want to hear you guys as loud as possible. Do we understand that? Do you guys get that? Excellent. Ash, you're up, my man. Thank you. Ooh, thank you, Anthony. I hope this doesn't suck. That would be, that'd be so awkward. <laughs> I'm excited to be out here. I've never been to the Northeast Kingdom. Uh, and when I was talking to Anthony and uh, Martha about the event, they were like, yeah, it's in Newport. I looked on the map, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I wanna. <laughs> Felt a little Jordan Peely, but uh, I'm excited to see you all here. I'm, I'm happy you're here. Um, I wrote this a couple weeks ago, reflecting on Independence Day. And uh, I, I really, I feel like it encompasses a lot of things that I truly mean. There's a song that I've listened to for a long time. It's been one of my favorites for years and years and for a while. I wasn't sure what it was that gave it such longevity for me. The artist is great, the music is wonderful, but what I realized, too young, and I've only felt more and more as a man, was that the lines in Edgar Winter's song were strands in my DNA. Not the way I was born, but the way I became fatigued living in this country. Why am I fighting to live if I'm just living to fight? Why am I trying to see if there is nothing in sight? Why am I trying to give when no one gives me a try? Why am I dying to live if I'm just living to die? It was not my birthday, but I was born on the 4th of July. This was the day I started to understand where I was, what I had to do and who I had to be. My father was not born an American. My mother was not born an American. My father's ancestors were not freed on Independence Day. That day is not for me. Independence Day, the USA celebrates dismantling of a system that oppressed them, dominated them until they could no longer stand it. They went to war to fight for their freedom, and they won. So why wouldn't you celebrate in grand fashion? Summer being not just a word, not just a season, but a feeling as sweet as freedom tastes. The grays of winter so long ago and still so far away. You go outside to feel the sun's rays beat down upon you and welcomed its fists. The heat from the concrete rises and makes the soles of your bare feet tingle. The smell of lighter fluid on the coals, harsh but familiar, gives way to the flames that signal something great on the way. Imagine my disappointment as a young child, enthusiastic to show off to my parents the knowledge imbued to me by a broken curriculum that today we celebrated Independence Day, the day everyone became free, and my parents said with a smirk, well, not everybody. Imagine my dismay as I grew up and heard people discuss slavery and segregation as if it was a gray sky that passed so long ago and is so far away. America being not just a word, not just a country, but a feeling as heavy as a cuff, as a chain, as a shackle. I went outside and saw the red and blue lights their rays beat down upon us as we bled under justice's fist. The heat from the concrete rising as we laid face down, making our cheekbones tingle. The smell of lighter fluid as those states on the electoral map turned red, revealing the coals that we'd been telling you were there. How they felt, always felt, and signaling that something somehow worse was on its way. Imagine my dismay as I learned outside of elementary school about Juneteenth the true day of liberation, and how it is recognized in no official capacity save for a few states like Vermont, where they declare, we'll put it on the calendar, for this year at least. 
Imagine my dismay as I learned that not only were my history lessons in school wrong, they were outright lies. Why did the Civil War start? Why did we cover Reconstruction without discussing the nadir of American race relations? A term coined by Rayford Logan to describe the point in time after Reconstruction through the early 20th century when post-slavery racism in this country was at its most vitriolic. Lynchings, segregation, legal racial discrimination. This specific period is how the world as we know it today was born. But that's not in our books. How can this education system teach our children that all America does is win and win and leave out the fact that those championship banners are soaked in the blood of its own people? I applaud budget cuts that are happening around the state regarding the police department, but there is still so much work to do. In Vermont, in our world, so much to teach, everything to dismantle. I could show you all the data, but you might be more apt to believe the police cannot be reformed if you'd always learned how historically it's a safe space for white supremacists, Klansmen, given reign to do as they please, and that the institution is working exactly as it was built to. I could show you all the data, but you might be more apt to believe that black people are at an economic disadvantage if you'd always learned that this country attacks and massacres us for thriving. Sure, I'm glad you know about it now, but it wasn't just Tulsa. See Atlanta, Georgia, 1906. Elaine, Arkansas, 1919. Rosewood, Florida, 1923. It goes on and on. The institution is working exactly as it was built to. I could show you all the data, but you might be more apt to believe our medical system is biased against black people if you'd always learned about the government's Tuskegee experiments, where black men seeking health care were purposefully injected with syphilis, unbeknownst to them, and studied as they rotted to death for research. If you learned how the laws instituted during Jim Crow affected the health care of black people and still do, especially black women, arguably on a cellular level, Harvard's Dr. Nancy Krieger found that black women born before 1975 in Jim Crow states are to this day more likely than those born at the same time in other states to develop forms of breast cancer that are more aggressive and less responsive to chemotherapy, a finding which, as Erica Stallings writes, seems to be the manifestation of Professor Arlene Geronimus' theory of weathering, which posits that the toxic stress of dealing with discrimination day in, day out, leads to poorer health outcomes. That day is no holiday to me. How could it be when every piece of history I learn reminds me this country hates me? And I'm light-skinned, ethnically ambiguous even. I'm lucky. I've worked hard and honestly every day of my life, and it may never be enough. But I stand here optimistic. I love what we could be. I was indeed born on the 4th of July. It was the day I learned where I was, what I had to do, and who I had to be. So as we gather here today, I reject America's holidays. I reject America's Independence Day. But I will appropriate the methods of the founding Americans and fight to destroy every system that oppresses us. To lay down everything, to dismantle that which breaks me. See, here, appropriate, defined as taking someone else's for your own use, typically without the owner's permission, I will not ask your permission. I will take their methods for my own and use them against the monster they created and allow to wreak generational havoc. Do as they did and go to war. I will go to war for you. I will go to war for me. I will go to war for black trans women whose freedom will lead to the freedom of all of us. We will only ever be as strong as our least protected allies. We need to destroy and rebuild nearly every system as we know it, and only then will we be the country we claim to be. The last lines of Edgar Winter's song are strands in my DNA. Not the way I was born, but the way I became. Furious living in this country. I will keep fighting to live until there's no reason to fight. I'll keep trying to see until the end is in sight. I am trying to give, so please give me a try. I am dying to live until I am ready to die. Black Lives Matter.